Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to show you how to convert a Fox body from a stock type mass air system to a slot math. Now the slot style mass air system was introduced uh, in 2005 for the Mustang. It's a meter that uses a totally different connector than the stock Fox body connector and it's referred to as a slot meter because it uses a sort of a rectangular slot style setup for the sensor in the housing. Now there are lots of reasons why you might want to do this. The most notable of course is that you want to increase the electrical range of the mass air meter. A standard 2005 to 2010 slot MAF is electrically compatible with the Fox body but its electrical range is quite a bit more than the stock meter. And if you put it in a big housing, then its electrical range increases substantially. And by electrical range, I mean the amount of air or the mass of air that can go through the meter before the meter hits five volts. Five volts being the signal limit from the meter and the signal limit that you can recognize with the PCM in the car. In the case of this particular car, what happened was it actually had a pretty big meter. It had one of these Pro-M uh, calibrated meters. It was calibrated for uh, 60 pound injectors and it was in a uh, three inch Pro tube. This is actually the original tube that it was in. <clears throat> and that was set up in a, a D1 Pro Charger application as a, as a blow through setup. In any event, the guys who set this car up, for whatever reason, uh, put on a connector that's got holes in the back of it. They broke the tabs off the connector. They lost the weather pack out of the connector. And the long and short of it is water got into the uh, connector for the mass air meter and blew the meter up. It happens all the time. Uh, I have a whole box of lightning meters that were installed in inner fenders where they pulled the two outer wires and they got water in them and blew them up. It's a real common problem when you're putting the meter in the inner fender. And it's something you have to be cognizant of when you do that to make sure that that connection is truly sealed. This meter blew up. Uh, it's like <laughs> four weeks or something to get another one. This car needs to get moved along. So. Our next closest setup was to install one of these SCT BA5000 uh, slot MAFs in the original three inch uh, Pro tube. That's been done with a, a weld on conversion kit. So there's an aluminum boss here, which was uh, welded in place. And then the slot MAF was put in. You get a little bit closer look at the, at the slot MAF here. So all that's really left is to wire it up. So there are a couple of tricks to this and that's why I'm making this video so you can see the correct way to wire this up. Let's go ahead and look at the wiring. Most of the time when you do a new MAF pigtail, you end up with a pigtail like this where all the wires are the same color. Uh, this is kind of a nightmare to uh, sort out. You've got to be very careful not to mix them up. So before I cut off the original wiring, I like to hook up a meter that's labeled. The factory meter is labeled A, B, C, D. And then I like to put a tape flag on each wire ahead of where I'm going to cut it so that I have a positive uh, identification of which is which. So that one's A, that one's B, that one's C, and that one's D. And of course it can be a little confusing when you've got like your C and D here, if you look, are kind of twisted together. So it's easy to mix them up if you're not careful. Uh, I know this seems like overkill, but I don't care how many times you've done it. If you label them like this, your chances of screwing this up are way, way less. That's all been labeled, everything looks good. Now, when I cut these off, I always like to leave a little bit of wiring um, so in the unlikely event that I think I'm going to reuse this pigtail for anything, I've got a little bit of wiring here that I could splice to. This pigtail has a busted connector, and no weather pack, uh, plus it's been full of water at one point. So that's probably not going to get reused, but you're better off to leave a little bit of wiring. A key difference between the original Fox body MAF and the slot MAF is that the Fox body MAF has four wires. 
and the slot math has six. Now, if you're familiar with the SN95 style meters, like this defunct lightning meter, this is actually one of the ones that's blown up from uh, getting water in it in the inner fender, you'll know that these ones have six wires as well. On these ones, they're actually labeled A, B, C, D, E, F, and the two outer wires, this one and this one, are for an inlet air temperature sensor if equipped. The lightning MAF doesn't actually have it in there, but if equipped, uh, they're for the inlet air temperature sensor. Wiring up an SN95 MAF to a Fox body is pretty straightforward. You just match up A to A, B to B, C to C, and D to D, leave E and F open, and away you go. No problem. Here's where one of the confusions comes in. On the slot MAF, there's still four wires here, which are for the MAF, and two that are for the inlet air temperature sensor, but the two that are for the inlet air temperature sensor are on one end. So instead of them being uh, the two outermost wires, it's two wires on one end are for the IAT, and the other four are for the MAF. So when you go to wire it up, don't make a mistake and, and uh, ignore the two outer wires and then wire the four inner wires like you would with an SN, that's wrong. The other thing you're gonna find uh, on the wiring diagrams is that the uh, uh, slot math wiring diagrams label the pins one through six, not A through F. So let me just give you a cross-reference. If you have a wiring diagram for the slot math, a is pin six, B is pin five, C is pin four, and D is pin three. And that's all we care about when it comes to the uh, Fox body conversion. An easy way to tell what's what here is, if you look for the flow indication on the slot math, even though like this SCT BA5000 doesn't have one, two, three, four, five, six, or even one and six labeled, it does have flow labeled and all of them should have that. If you look at the uh, flow, then that's pin one and that's pin six, okay? So uh, the uh, most upstream wire is pin one, the most downstream wire is pin six. So I also like to label the uh, pigtail I'm gonna wire up to. So let's start out, I'm gonna make an A label. That's on pin six. That's the most downstream wire, which is this one. I'm gonna put an A on there. And I'm gonna go ahead and label the four uh, ABCD uh, wires that we're gonna to need to splice in here. Once we have everything labeled, we're gonna to need to strip these wires so that we can connect them together. It is easy to mix these up, and that's why I suggest that you label them. Then let's put them together in order. A, that's the red wire. That goes to the number six wire on this connector. These connections are vitally important to be good connections. So my suggestion is that you use solder seals to connect them together. They're the easiest and most effective connector to use in a situation like this. And they're reasonably inexpensive these days. So. And then I just do a quick double check. That's A, that's A. Those are together. Let's get our heat gun. And we'll just heat this until we see the solder run. Then you're gonna do that for the four remaining connections. And of course, each time you do it, make sure that you double check. The next one will be B to B, right? Make sure that you have it right because you don't wanna have to cut this off. I know you guys think it's probably overkill labeling this stuff so carefully and being so careful with it, but it is real easy when you're doing this to get distracted, phone call, somebody walks in and you get mixed up and next thing you know, you've got C attached to D. If you've done it this way as a final check, you can check that wires together, that's D to D. This wires together, that's C to C. <laughs> This wires together, that's B to B. And this wire is together, 
there's only one left, so that's A to A. So we know we've wired that the way we wanted to. We've got a double check on it with the flags. Everything's good. Believe me, <laughs> I have ended up wiring this uh, wrong despite all of this. But at the end with this double check, uh, you're able to catch your mistake if you have made one. Fortunately, we didn't here. Okay, so now we got our new pigtail on the harness. We got our new MAF and they will plug together like that. And we can stick this back in the inner fender here, put all this tubing back together and see if we got a car that'll run now. Whether you're wiring in a pigtail for an SN95 meter or one of these slot MAFs, this procedure is really the same. It's just that there's a wiring difference. On the SN95, the two outer wires are for the IAT. On the slot MAF, uh, the two upstream wires are for the IAT. And on the slot MAF, they're labeled one through six instead of A through F. I'll put a diagram or a cross-reference in the description uh, so that you've got something visual to look at uh, when you're working on this project. It's just that easy. These are electrically compatible. And now we've got a big meter back in the car and hopefully we'll get it to run. See you next time.